Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The Lagos state government plans to break away from the national grid. Now, it's part of a new electricity policy to make Lagos a 21st century state. Let's talk more about power generation and distribution in Lagos with the Commissioner for Energy and Mineral Resources in Lagos State, Mr. Olaleri Odushote. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning and thank you for having me. All right. So... Not many people know much about the plans of the Lagos state government to generate their own power. Please tell us more about that. And before you start, just exactly where are we regarding power in, in Lagos? All right, thank you. So Lagos state government does not plan to generate power per okay. se. What Lagos state wants is for power generation in Lagos to be available and sufficient for all Lagosians. So it's not so much power generation anyway, it's really just universal access to electricity. That's what we want. Now to make Lagos state a 21st century as espoused by the administration of Mr. Babajide Olushala Somolu, we need to have 24 hour electricity in Lagos and it needs to be sufficient for the needs of industry as well as residents. So like I said, where are we right now? And what's the plan to get us to where Lagos wants us to go to? Well, the first stage in trying to plan a solution is to first of all identify and dimension what that solution is. So to do that, we've had consultation sessions. We've had, um, we've had, um, we've had interactions with the public sector. We've had interactions with the private sector. We've had interactions with the populace of Lagos. We've also met with the industry as well, um, the, the practitioners today, the discos, the transmission company of Nigeria, to try and understand what the bottlenecks are and what's stopping power from getting to Lagosians. And what we find out that it's not so much the fact that there's no generation, but that the distribution, the metering and the transmission aspects are where the issues are. Today, Nigeria generates under four, mega, four gigawatts of electricity, of which Lagos State gets about 900 megawatts. That's not enough for Lagosians, because when you consider that we get 900 megawatts from the grid, and a study from 2014 shows that we have 15 gigawatts of auto generation capacity, then Lagos is, gener is getting all the parts using mostly from off-grid. So what we want to do is encourage the, um, we, we want to encourage the development of that sector to ensure that it's then more, um, it's more, it's more defined and it's more focused and it's, um, it's better planned such that Lagosians can then get the benefits of the cheaper electricity that we think we can encourage by, by working with the sector. Mm. Okay, uh, talk, talk a little bit more on, you know, um, because you just mentioned nine, 900 megawatts. Um, is 900 megawatts going to be enough to give, give Lagosians 24 hour power? Um, if we fix the distribution and the metering and those basic infrastructure deficits, um, or would you say that the Lagos maybe needs to get up to 2,000 megawatts um, if he truly wants to have 24-7 power? Well, is, uh, first question, is 900 megawatts enough? Certainly not. And 900 megawatts is what we get today, even with the issues with the sector. And, um, and I can ask you that question. You live in Lagos and so do you. I live in Lagos as well. I certainly don't have all the power that I want from the grid. In my house, I have um, an additional power plant of my own, as I imagine that you do, such that when there's uh, an interruption in the supply, I have to go and switch on my own IPP. And a lot of Nigerians do that as well. And what we're trying to do is encourage the um, growth of the sector by saying, now, central planning is what, is what we've had so far. So we all get power from the grid and we all expect that the power from the grid should be sufficient. We know that it's not. And rather than have a solution, a secondary solution that then works for Lagos, everybody goes on their individual way to procure their own power generation. We don't think that's efficient. We certainly don't enjoy any economies of scale from that. And we're looking to replan the Lagos electricity market to say, here's a Lagos electricity market. We've already um, gone ahead and carried out, um, uh, we've already developed an integrated resource plan working with the USAID that has identified how we can improve that market separate from the Nigerian, the rest of the Nigerian market, but still connected to the rest of the Nigerian market. So we're focusing on Lagos and trying to solve the Lagos problems ourselves. So in a paper published a few months ago, you said that the plan is for Lagos State to go ahead and ensure transmission distribution functions should be owned, uh, operated uh, by the private sector. Please tell us what the plan is for Lagos State government to work with the private sector to ensure that you know, these power plans are fulfilled. I think when you think about the capacity of the government to do things, and you compare that to the capacity of the private sector to do things as well, you find out that most of the capacity that exists is actually in the private sector and not in the 
in the um, public sector. I'll give you an example. Lagos State's GDP is about $153 billion. Lagos State government's uh, budget is about $3 billion. So if you look at the capacity of the private sector to mobilize and the capacity of the government to mobilize, there's no comparison. It's infinitely more, it's greater on the, on the side of the, the private sector. What we just need to do is to encourage them to mobilize these funds, right, um, 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 to, to serve the people of Lagos in a proper, in a more coordinated way rather than where we all do it individually. 26 million citizens in Lagos cannot be trying to do their own power. It certainly would not be cost effective. Okay, and then, you know, still focusing on generation. I've seen uh, people who, who have um, made mention of uh, converting waste uh, to power and some of all of that. Um, are these some of the things that Lagos State Government is looking into? And will the private sector be able to partner with the Lagos State Government to you know, see if those things are possible. Oh, certainly. So one of the things that we're trying to do with the policy is to encourage the private sector. In fact, it's a primary aim of the policy is to encourage the private sector to work with the government to try and solve the power problems in Lagos. So we're looking at everything from renewables. I mean, when you fly over Lagos and you look at um, the amount of rooftop rooftop space we're available and you think we have available and you think how about if I cover all of this with solar would it solve the problem I mean given the crashing prices of solar over the past few years we're starting to we're starting to think it's actually a viable alternative and we're saying if we can encourage the development of that and perhaps even make a statement that says that we will encourage the improvement of the mix of renewables into the in, into the generation sector in, in Lagos State. I mean, if you look at the winds anyway, the winds are tilting towards renewables. Um, it's, it's starting to be unfashionable to continue to burn fossil fuel. For one, it's bad for the environment. And if you look at the tenuous ecological nature of Lagos, you start to think we should be focused on that too. And the government certainly is looking at that. So um, regarding this topic about what Lagos is trying to do, it is laudable. It's something that maybe other states should emulate, you know, to boost the economic activity of the estate and um, by extension the IGR and all of that. But some stakeholders say that this is a plan that would likely be scuttled by the federal government. Do you have such concerns? I don't. I do not. The federal government and the state government have been working together to try and improve the lot of Nigerians. And, and certainly the federal government would not be keen to do anything that, um, that, um, that's inimical to the development or the progress of the state. That's so, sorry, is this experience. because of the party lines or...? Not so much along party lines. Let me take you back and look at where we're coming from. Um, the, the constitution of Nigeria is clear that distribution of electricity is in the purview of the state. It is not mentioned anywhere on the exclusive list. However, when the Power Sector Reform Act came into being, the states were not in a position to pass laws or to do anything about electricity in their state, given the way the um, power sector had evolved at that time. We had one monolithic structure which was then divided into 11 distribution companies. It wasn't divided along state lines. Fortunately for Lagos, we have two distribution companies, all our own. And Lagos State, as you know, is, is, is better prepared to manage the affairs of um, electricity than many other states, especially as they don't have dedicated distribution providers for themselves. The constitution is clear on that. The, um, the distribution, the, um, the, the, um, the, um, the regulation of distribution is the purview of the state governments and we intend to fully take advantage of that. The federal government recognizes that fact. They've been very cooperative in the past. They've made the laws when they thought we could not do it ourselves, and when we start to talk to them about making it, we fully expect that they will support us. All right, um, is there a time frame um, with which you know, the Lagos State government has, and the current government of Lagos State has, with which you know, these things can be achieved? And, and also, um, where would you say the biggest challenge might lie um, in making these things happen? So, the governor of Lagos State has directed that we go ahead with this. He's very keen on it. He's been very focused on making Lagos a 21st century. And he understands that electricity is, uh, is, is one of the building blocks, if you will. I mean, energy is extremely important. If you have no energy, you can't do anything, whether it's um, electrical energy or whether it's even physical energy. We, un we <coughs> understand that. I mean, the, the, the lights have to come on for you to be able to see and do anything. We want a 24-hour economy, and everybody understands that for you to do that, the street lights have to be on. By, by the end of next month, we expect that all of the street lights in the major streets of Lagos will have been retrofit and will all be on. So by next month, all the street lights in Lagos should be working. That's one. What else should we be expecting? We would have passed a policy that will clarify the vision of Lagos as it when it comes to electricity, we will be far ahead in the process of drafting a law
that will enable us to be able to take off, to create a Lagos electricity market and be able to manage it to, um, to a favorable outcome for all of Lagosians. Okay. And, and by extension, Nigeria, because we think, and, and if you look at it, we think um, Lagos State has been taking um, um, steps in the electricity sector from the beginning. It was the Lagos State government that enabled the Enron barges to be able to um, contribute 290 megawatts to the to the sector. It was Lagos State that went ahead and commissioned five IPPs to take away the state facilities from the grid and enable more power to be available on the grid for the rest of Lagos. It was the Lagos State government has certainly done many first. Lagos State has introduced a number of transformers into communities where they don't have them. We're currently in the process of taking some low-income communities out and um, turning them into centers of excellence, beacons, if you will, where we're going to ensure that there's near 24-hour power there by beefing up the infrastructure in the system. What the areas systems. are we talking about? So for, we signed um, an MOU with um, Ikeja Disco to take out some areas of Ali Mosho, right? fully meter those areas, fix the downstream um, distribution infrastructure there and ensure that there's near constant power supply in those areas. What we expect is that we'll be able to do that with Ecodisco in the near future as well. Before the end of this year, we expect to have signed a similar agreement with Ecodisco to take out some low-income areas and fully meter those areas and ensure that we show that we can have 24-hour power in Lagos. Um, so, is, is there um, a funding challenge with some of all of this? You know, and, you know, because it, it, it might look you know, like it's properly planned, but it, it also is a huge task. Uh, to get the whole of Lagos properly. So that's why we're up. starting with um, bite-sized pieces. We'll take out a small area, fix it, and then demonstrate that it can happen. If we take a low-income area and we ensure that they're able to get electricity and pay for it, it would be easier for you to then expand that pilot to the rest of Lagos. And that's what we see ourselves doing. Okay, so you're saying funding is not a challenge? Well, if you consider that we have, and, and I'll use this example, it's actually very simple and I think, I think you can flow with me. In the past, um, let's look, and I, I said a study, right, demonstrated, a study showed that we had about 15 gigawatts of self-generation capacity in Lagos. If you compare that to 900 megawatts from the grid, then it tells you that somebody's paying for that capacity that exists. And um, I'll, I'll, let me say something that um, might ruffle a few feathers here. If we've imported 15 gigawatts of auto generation capacity into the country. Now, uh, if you have a generator, you will probably tell me in your house that you paid cash for it. You didn't buy it on a long lease. If you then imagine that these 15 gigawatts were paid for in cash, and then you compare us trying to do a central power plant and then asking for all sorts of federal guarantees because the market structure is not able to, to sustain it, then you will understand what I'm talking about. The capacity to pay for electricity already exists in the sector. People are paying for it. It's more expensive than the grid, so how much more the grid that's cheaper? People will pay for it. So funding would, be, would not be a problem, in my opinion. Okay, funding knocked out. No other challenge so far? Oh, no, certainly there will be challenges. It's, um, it's, um, when you talk to customers, a lot of people, and, and we believe that that's changing. When you speak to people and they talk about the generators that they've bought in their houses, they don't consider that cost. They consider it a sunk cost. When you then talk about paying for electricity from the grid, they start to look at that and say, oh, this is starting to look expensive. It's actually a lot cheaper. And what we intend to do down the road is to demonstrate how, how much cheaper the grid power is than what you self-generate. We'll start to educate people a bit more and, and highlight it for them to realize. Because the truth is, when you buy these generators, you also have to think about replacing them after so many years. A lot of times when you don't replace them, your cost of maintenance start to go up. And you, you, you don't see those because what you then look at is, oh, grid power should be cheap. Well, it, it, it won't be available for very long if it's, if it's cheaper than it should be because at some point nobody will be able to subsidize it anymore. When you say people will pay for it, who, who exactly? And you know, what's, what's the setup with that? So people are already paying for electricity today, let's be honest. So when I say people will pay for it, they'll pay for something that's cheaper and that's available. And that's what we intend to provide. So you're saying that okay. when this new Lagos State I mean, electricity policy comes on, Nigerians will pay lesser for electricity than what we already pay now? On the average, that would be yes. Now, grid power may be slightly more expensive because what we expect is that it's going to be cost reflective. But if you compare that to the um, generators that you're running and the are better past my neighbors that you see running, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Mm. Okay. Um, also share, you know, with regards to infrastructural deficit, we've been able to pull this off, you know, because I know that the EKDC and the Kedja Electric have also struggled um, somehow, some way with um, infrastructure. Um, there has also been a backlog with regards to uh, metering. 
Um, I've also spoken well with other um, distribution companies who have also complained that you know there's a lot of people who are tapping power here and there that aren't necessarily even paying for this power. They're not on the, you know, the grid in any way, but they're receiving electricity. Um, so how much of a challenge has that also been with um, Lagos? It's, um, it's a significant challenge and one that the discos have expressed to us. And what we've said is that we'll work with them to ensure that we curb all of those, um, all of those um, acts. Now, if I'll give an example, if there are 10 people in an area, right, and five of them are metered, those five that are metered will get electricity and will pay for what they consume. The five that aren't metered will get estimated bills. Now, those estimated bills may not be equitably shared, and there may also be another three people that are using electricity that are not known. Those three people's bills will still be shared amongst the known customers yeah. of EcoDisco or Ikeja Disco, depending on where you are. And that then leads to charges of unfairness to the disco. The discos are doing their honest bit, but the people don't see that because of the activities in the sector. When everybody is fully metered, it will then be clear if there's additional power being lost, that there are some people who are connected and are not metered, it'll be easier to focus on trying to find those people. And Lagos State will be working very hard with the discos. We'll be working very closely with the discos to identify where those gaps and leakages are and then try and close them. So with this new system, you're assuring Nigerians that there'll be no um, power collapse, there'll be no power failure or nothing like that, 24 hours electricity all the way? Well, I'm not assuring Nigerians, I'm assuring Lagosians, Lagosians that we will be working very hard to ensure that the grid in Lagos stays stable and that the Lagos market is viable and fully supplied. Okay, so by next, by next month, streets, all street lights should be powered. So what timeline should we expect this you know, Light Up Lagos project? Well, for, for the Light Up Lagos, and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, we expect to have the policy in place by next month. Um, Mr. Governor is quite keen to have this going. We expect to have a law in place by um, the first quarter of next year, and we expect to start implementing that law by the end of next year. Working, of course, with um, the federal agencies as well as the state distribution companies. Okay, and, you know, is there a... a well, is there hope, you know, that if, you know, you don't meet up by the time the current um, Lagos State government is leaving office, uh, there would be some continuity with this arrangement? We fully expect that there will be continuity because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. I'm sitting in my house. I want to go home, switch on the light and have it come on. I want to go to my place of business, switch on the light and have it come on. And we think that um, any, any, Lagos has always been a progressive state. Lagos will continue to be a progressive state. We believe in continuity of ideas. Lagos master plan that was developed is the one we're still following. We're currently um, renewing it for another 30 years. And once we have the renewed master plan, we expect that succeeding, succeeding administrations will look at it and only improve it. So Lagos State, if you, if, you, if you know, from 1999 has been on a continuously upward drive. And, and we have been consistent in our investment in infrastructure. Mm. So finally, um, wh where do you see Lagos being in the next few years if you know, everything happens as you, as you plan regarding where Lagos would be in terms of the economic viability, success of local businesses, SMEs and all of that? So the vision of Lagos State is to be Africa's model megacity. To be Africa's model megacity, you need the infrastructure to be appropriate for a model megacity. We've also, a central agenda of um, the Babaji Olushola Songo administration is the themes agenda, which M stands for making Lagos a 21st century. So it's consistent with the vision of being Africa's model megacity. We expect um, the problems of water to be sorted. We expect the problems of, of infrastructure, power, to be sorted. We expect the problems of uh, interconnectivity, i.e. traffic and transportation, to be sorted. We expect security and governance to be top-notch. So our vision for Lagos is one of a 21st century mega city. I mean, uh, well, I, I keep using the word mega city. Lagos State has actually grown to be a hyper city now because we now have more than 20 million people here. So the idea is to then make Lagos a welcoming abode for people who are willing to be productive and contribute to the economy. Okay. Fantastic. Wow. Um, I was, well, if you can, in 10 seconds, you know, I show um, Lagosians that it's not going to have, you know, I've seen a lot of people complain about the Lagos Light Rail project and the promises that were made with that, but, you know, it doesn't seem to have gone very far. Um, can there be some assurance that this will go as planned? Oh, certainly. Let me, let me also say this. Uh, Mr. Babajili Olusola is a committed, is a committed governor. He has assured that the light rail project, as you have mentioned, the Lagos metro system, I dare say, the blue line and the red line will be operational by the end of next year. Now, there are some things you can't 
lie about because they have a, they have a, they have a, how do you call it? They have a, a sell by date. So they have an expiry date. If I say that I'm going to do something by tomorrow, if it's not happening by tomorrow, then you've seen that I've lied. Mr. Sonolu has said that the rail programs, the first phase of the blue, the blue line and the red line will be operational by December 2022. And I've seen the work that's going on in the background. It will happen. Okay. We will light up Lagos streets by the end of next month. We will pass the policy by the end of next month. We will have a law in place on electricity by the first quarter of next year. We'll start implementing that by the end of next year. So all of these things have dates that are firm and that we're committed to working with the federal government. All right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Olale Reodushote, you have spoken fantastically well about the Lagos state and our projects regarding um, electricity. Let's just wait and see just how great everything turns out because really that's, that's the plan and that's the hope. Certainly. So we just spoke to the Commissioner for Energy and Mineral Resources here about power generation in Lagos State. We hope you enjoyed every bit of the conversation and all through and what we talked about extensively the newspapers and the headlines uh, making stories in the country as well as our top trending stories here for you if you missed out on any part of the conversation do follow us on all our social media platforms it's at plus tv africa and of course um, same thing with our youtube channel at plus tv africa and the plus tv africa lifestyle i am osao gi and i am anetta felix bye bye